Some of the few things that we want to be careful of when we think of sushi, especially rolls, is it's not the beginning and the end of sushi. Rolls are just one facet of sushi, kind of a very good stepping stone, very good gateway drug for a lot of Americans and a lot of non-Japanese people to find sushi. Hello, my name is John Daly of New York Sushi Co. I'm gonna show you how to make a tuna roll today. So as far as the first step to make rolled sushi would be a mat or makisu. You can pretty much find them at most of your major grocery stores, specialty restaurant shops as well. Then I suppose number two would be some seaweed for your roll, as well rice, and properly sourced fish. Today we have a bit of the sustainably farmed, ecologically sound tuna from Spain. This is probably the, uh, if tuna had legs, this would be the hip portion, if you will. Some things that we want to look for when we're buying fish for sushi or for any sort of raw consumption would be nice color. We get a lot of the, the nice clean fat, less tendony. Then you have your otoro or your belly fatty tuna meat. It's a little smoother and I feel personally a little more supple. This is one of my favorite cuts on the tuna. So you want to look for a nice firm flesh. You know, if your finger can sink into the meat, there's a problem. Don't buy bargain tuna. Equally as important as the fish, I feel, is the rice. This is called a hongiri, the bottom of a barrel, if you will. And it provides a beautiful flat layer, a flat surface, that is, for the rice to be cut on. The idea is to now cover each grain of rice evenly, coating it with the vinegar solution. So as far as store-bought vinegar, any Japanese vinegar will do. Since many of us don't have hongiris in our houses, I recommend a nice, large, Mixing bowl, I certainly recommend going and picking up some sushi rice. I also recommend looking for short grain rice. That may save you a, uh, a couple, couple dollars as far as anything labeled sushi rice is definitely gonna be labeled sushi rice. You're looking for your, your fish and your rice and you, you come across some seaweed, don't hesitate to pick up some seaweed from the supermarket. Now there's one surefire way to give life to your seaweed is to roast it in a toaster or oven. Let that go around the clock at just under 200 degrees. Want that nice, crisp sound to it? Let's do it. Let's make some sushi. So a few very important factors in making a good rolled sushi. You wanna have all your ingredients ready. Don't be afraid to make the shape of the filling of the roll kind of ready to go, just to be put directly into the roll. The quicker you make the roll, the better. Take my tuna, which we've trimmed from our block a little earlier, I'm just giving it the form it's probably going to take inside. Make sure I don't have too much. Make sure I have enough. Make sure there's no weird parts. Funky chicken wing. You, know, you want to have your hands nice and moist to be able to manipulate the rice on top of the seaweed. But you don't want to have your hands wet because then you'll ruin the seaweed that you just spent all day, all night, or all morning roasting. What's going to constitute enough meat for one roll is essentially you know, two fat fingers. Stretch across your seaweed. Take roughly like a racquetball, if you will. A racquetball size of uh, rice. Racquetball sized lobe of rice. Work it down the middle. Push her on up to the top. Keep your hands light. The fingers dancing, nimble like a piano. Bow, 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 bow. Now the first time you do it, do it right. Don't worry about speed. Speed comes in time, you know? Perfect practice makes perfect. Practice doesn't make perfect. A little wasabi. I source grated wasabi. Beautiful tuna stuff. Knife, pow. Set it up. So what you do on the on your maki soup, put the, uh, the bottom of the seaweed on the bottom of the maki soup. You leave about a fingernail's length of seaweed to rice between the top of the seaweed to the rice. You bring the bottom and make it meet that rice around. extra rice, put it back in, no problem. Tuna roll. So what we do here is you want to size it up when you cut your roll. A tuna roll is traditionally cut into six pieces. Some rolls are cut into four, some rolls are cut into eight. This one you find the middle of the roll, kind of guesstimate. There's no real markings on it. If you're lucky, you've, you've done close enough to, to equal. Then at this part, you cut into thirds. Being always mindful of your fingers with a nice sharp knife. Bow. 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 What I consider to be proper tuna roll, if you will, is you have a lot of fish 
a fair amount of rice wrapped around the fish and the seaweed. Don't do this.